Am I the asshole for not giving my brother my college fund after he was cut off for coming out? My 18-year-old brother recently came out as gay and my grandparents, who are homophobic AF like they don't even hide it, didn't take it well. My parents obviously support him coming out, but my grandparents have cut him off financially. See, for all of us, my grandparents set aside separate college funds over the years. We don't necessarily have to use it for school, which was my case. I'm 27 years old and I had a son my second year of college, so I decided to get into an apprenticeship program instead and use that money for baby expenses and to save up for him. My girlfriend and I are managing well working full time. We don't touch that money at all unless it's for him. My brother knows I still have this money and he's asking me to help invest in his future since it was always a given that our grandparents would pay for his college. Our parents are well off financially so he wouldn't receive much in terms of financial aid, but they don't want to cover for college tuition because he's an adult now. My sister already graduated and used what was left of the money to put a down payment on a house. I'm really his only option and he's desperate. Because I'm refusing, my brother is calling me a traitor and it's not fair for him to be cut off like this just because he's gay. And I agree. Nobody's happy with my grandparents, but we're using this money for our son. He said he needs it now and I'm being completely selfish keeping this money to myself. My sister agrees with him and that life's been hard enough on him already because of this, so at least I can do as a brother is help him get an education. So am I the asshole for not wanting to give him the money? Would I be wrong for leaving after six and a half years with no proposal in sight? I, 25 female, have been with my partner, 29 male, for six and a half years. I'm getting fed up with the fact that we haven't gotten married yet. I am ready for the next chapter of our lives and just feel stuck. I can see why you may be thinking I'm shitty. I would too with that heading, but hear me out. We've been together six and a half years, are financially stable, own a home together for four years, and have a dog together. He told me three years ago that he was ready, and a proposal still hasn't happened. We've been through a lot together and have grown together. We went through my brain tumor diagnosis, my grandma who raised me passing, his grandpa's passing, and more. He just tells me to be patient, but he won't give me a reason as to why we are waiting. When I've asked him about it, he always tells me that there's nothing holding him back from getting married. He says that he wants the same thing as me. He swears that it's going to happen for us and even told me he had something planned before COVID hit. But I know by his own admittance that it wasn't more than just an idea. He knows marriage is very important to me, which he has always said he's on board for. He also tells me that he'd say no to a proposal from me because he'd be hurt I took the opportunity away from him. I feel like my needs are being dismissed without even being given a reason. If he would communicate a concern, I'd be more understanding but this just feels ridiculous. The more time that passes, the more frustrated I become. I never ever want to be that woman to give an ultimatum, but I can't wait around forever if it isn't going to happen. I know that sounds terrible, but if we weren't on the same page, we both need to be able to find that person with the same goals, wants, and needs in life, right? So would I be wrong for leaving him? Story time about how my obsessive ex tried to kidnap me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My obsessive ex and I met three years ago. We both live in LA and met on set on a modeling job. The first day that we met, he was totally cool, really friendly. Obviously, he was very good looking, so I liked him. But I had just gotten out of a serious relationship, so I had no intention on dating anyone. When he asked me for my phone number after the photo shoot finished, I politely said no. But guess what? The following day, I got a text message from him. He told me he asked the makeup artist for my phone number, and she gave it to him. I told him that he shouldn't have done that because I had told him I didn't want to give him my phone number, but he explained that he really liked me and that all he wanted to do was just hang out like friends. At the time, I had no friends in LA. I mean, even now, I only have like one good friend, so I accepted to go have breakfast with him the following day. And of course, he was the most charming guy I had ever met. And weirdly enough, we had the exact same interests. I loved horseback riding, painting, and cooking. And that's when he told me that he also loved horseback riding, painting, and cooking. He even showed me some of his paintings that he had hung up at his apartment. After that, we hung out occasionally, he would come over to my place and I would cook and we would watch a movie. After a few weeks, he invited me to hang out with his guy friends. We had a really great time and all of his guy friends really enjoyed my company. But toward the end of the night, I could tell that he was getting really jealous. When he took me home, he asked me if I liked his friends. And of course I said no. Then he said that it looked like I was having a little too much fun with them. But here's the thing, the way he said it was really cute. Like, almost endearing, like I actually felt bad for him. So at that time, it didn't really freak me out. We didn't speak for a few days and I realized that I was actually missing him. So I reached out and asked him if he wanted to go on an official date. And he said, of course. After that first date, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. Things moved really quickly after that. He moved into my apartment, we got a dog, and we met each other's families. For two months, everything was going really, really well. I was pretty happy with the relationship, I loved our new dog, and we were both getting a lot of modeling work individually. Especially me. I got a campaign with a pretty big designer and it was my dream come true. I had to travel to Italy for the campaign and he got very jealous. He started asking me questions like who's gonna be there, do you already know the other models? And of course I didn't, I had no idea who was gonna be there or who the other models were gonna be. This was pretty much the beginning of the end. 
I was in Italy for two weeks, and while I was there, he would constantly call me, text me, check up on me. It even started affecting the work I was doing. I would run to my phone in between shots just to answer it so that he wouldn't think I was doing something bad. The photographer even asked me to put my phone away, and I did. Of course, this made him freak out. The following day, he shows up at my hotel. He told me that I needed to start behaving like his girlfriend. Then he started going to all the photo shoots with me. He would watch me like a hawk while I was working. Things get scary, part two. Part two of how my obsessive ex tried to kidnap me. Disclaimers is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. After he acted really controlling and jealous in Italy, I decided to break up with him. When we got back to LA, I told him he needed to move out. He totally freaked out, grabbed my phone, and threw it up against the wall. I kicked him out and told him never to come back. The following day, I had to go buy a new phone, and I told him that if he wanted to come pick up his stuff, he could. Luckily, he took all his stuff when I wasn't there. And he even left his apartment key. I thought it was all over. Three days later, he started blowing up my phone asking if we could talk. I told him I didn't want him coming into my apartment anymore. We agreed to meet in the parking garage so that I could give him a few things he forgot, which of course he left in my apartment so that he had a reason to come back. He finally arrived and asked me to get in the car, but I told him I would not get in the car. Then he started crying and begging for me to get in the car. I had never seen him like this, so I got into the car. He instantly locked all the doors and wouldn't let me out. Then he started driving really fast. I told him to let me out of the car and he said no. I asked him where we were going, but he wouldn't tell me. We finally got into a red light and I managed to unlock the door and get out. I ran straight into a restaurant and I asked them to call the cops. But he came running in after me. Luckily, a few of the servers stopped him before he could reach me. I asked them to take him out and lock the door. I called 911 and told them everything. Within two minutes, a police officer was there. And when he searched my ex's car, he found rope, duct tape, and sleeping pills. The officer told me it would be easy to get a restraining order. I called my parents and they flew in straight away. They luckily arrested him that night. When my parents and I went to the police the following day, they told us that they let him out on bail and that they couldn't keep him in there because technically he hadn't done anything illegal. That's when it hit me. I was never going to be safe again as long as he was out and handy. So I had a friend that we can call Miranda who was obsessed with me. I was genuinely friends with her, but she would never give me a break. I could not get a breather from her at any point in time. Everywhere I went, she went. And this girl would actually get so upset with me anytime I would go over to another friend's house. I knew she was really insecure and just trying to get attention, so I tried to be patient with her. However, one day I just could not take it anymore. I got into a massive fight with her over how overprotective she is. I literally said, you are a stage five clinger. And in response, this girl ended up joining my basketball and softball team, which I've been on for forever. She told her mom that I was bullying her, which was a complete lie, but then her mom went to the coaches. She got me kicked off the team and they continued to spread rumors about me. I ended up losing my best friends and even my boyfriend over the rumors that she spread about me. So that's when I decided to get revenge. So I decided that I was going to send her over an apology gift with makeup in it, which was a mix of drugstore items and poison ivy. Story time, my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So a little background information. So Gavin and I had been best friends ever since we were little. We lived in the same neighborhood and my parents and his grandparents were like pretty close, I guess. But like everybody in our neighborhood was close with each other. And I always had a huge crush on him. And I would try to like subtly tell him that I liked him, but he would always be like, ooh, don't joke with me like that. Like, that's not true. And eventually I just kind of got the hint that that was his way of telling me, I don't like you, stop before I tell you in a mean way. So when we were in middle school, he was always having these like two day relationships with all these girls and everything. And me, not so much because sis didn't have a glow up until she reached like her sophomore year in high school. And the thing was, I wasn't that best friend who would be like, ooh, don't date her, like she's ugly or anything like that. Like I would totally respect all of his relationships even if they were two days long, but he would literally still block me. Well, the one day we were hanging out at his house, like for part two. Part two about how my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So like I said, the one night I was at his house and he was on my phone and he was asking me who all these guys were on my Snapchat. And I told him that I had been talking to them and he was just being a super toxic. He was talking shit on every single one of them. So eventually I started dating this guy, Trey. And after that, he texted me saying that I was gross and everything else. When the next day he literally got a girlfriend. But weirdly enough, he didn't block me that time. He actually started texting me more, saying how him and his girlfriend were so happy together, da 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 da. And unlike him, I would be supportive. Well, the one night at 2 a.m., he came over my house and he was like, I don't have feelings for my girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, then why are you with her? And then he has the nerve to say, don't you get that I like you? Like, really? Well, eventually we cut off all communication and he was still with this girl. Well, the one night he asked me to come over and talk and we ended up doing the nasty. And then he blocked me on everything after he said we should both leave our girlfriends and boyfriends. Well, I ended up telling his girlfriend what we did and they also come to my family cookouts. 
Extremely creepy story time on how my aunt passed away. So a little background information. About five years ago, my aunt had gotten pregnant. It was really weird because a few months before she got pregnant, the doctor told her that she would never be able to have kids. And her and her husband had been trying for years. Well, I think like two weeks after the baby was born, it had passed away. And I don't really know why. For some reason, my mom won't tell me. Which is weird, but anyways, after that, my aunt just felt like a lot of things weren't going the way that she wanted them to in her life. So she decided to get closer with God. Well, every Sunday night, we go to my grandparents' house for a family dinner. And while we were there, my aunt starts going on this whole rampage. She said that God's not giving her the answers that she needs. And I don't really know what she means by answers. So my grandparents kick her out because she's acting like a psycho. Well, the same night at 3 a.m. in the morning, we hear a knocking on the door. And lo and behold, it's my aunt. So my mom lets her in because she feels bad and feels like she's the only one that will actually listen to my aunt. So she makes everybody sit at the kitchen table. And she pulls out a Ouija board from her bag, like for part two. Creepy story time about how my aunt passed away, part two. So like I said, she makes us all sit down at the kitchen table and she pulls out a Ouija board. She was like, I found out how I can get some answers. I just feel like I need you guys around me for positive energy. And my family is very, very religious. Like we don't fuck with that shit because my mom felt bad for her she let her use it in our house but my mom didn't want my sisters and i around that so she just sent us to bed well the next morning i wake up and i ask my mom what happened with the ouija board situation my mom just said that it was really scary because before she thought it was like a load of bullshit and she said that her and my dad didn't touch the ouija board because like i said they were very religious and did not mess with that stuff but apparently it said for her not to buy a house with the numbers 2815 well, two years later, my aunt got remarried and her and her husband ended up having two kids. So they bought a new house and no, it didn't have the numbers on it. One of their kids accidentally shattered the glass door. So they went and got a new one and it came with those exact numbers on it. Two days later, the house burnt down and nobody survived. Story time about how my boyfriend broke up with me to marry my mother. This claim is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Yes, my boyfriend actually did marry my mom. A little backstory on him. He and I had been dating for six months. We decided we wanted to move in together, but neither of us had a job. So we ended up moving in with my mother. A little backstory on my mom, her and I never got along when I was growing up. I mean, it would get to the point where we would throw hands. Every single week she had a new boyfriend. Most of the time her boyfriends would come live with us and she would pay for everything. She even asked me to get a job so that I could help support her and her boyfriend. I started working at a restaurant and yeah, I helped her pay for bills. I would even buy her boyfriend his beer. When I got accepted into college, I decided I would move out. After that, I barely spoke to my mom. Fast forward to when my boyfriend and I move in with her, she would wear lingerie around the house and constantly flirt with my boyfriend. I had to tell her on several occasions to cover up and just leave him alone. But here's the thing, it never bothered my boyfriend. In fact, he would flirt back. I thought he was just joking. Until a few months pass and he breaks up with me part two as Part two of how my boyfriend broke up with me to marry my mother. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. So like I said in part one, we moved into my mom's house and she was wearing lingerie all the time. And she would constantly flirt with my boyfriend. My boyfriend was having a really hard time finding a job, but luckily I found a job. So I started working as a personal assistant. The problem is that as a personal assistant, you have to be on call almost 24 seven. So I was usually never home. And sometimes when I would get home, I'd have to go right back out. This allowed for my mom and my boyfriend to spend a lot of time together by themselves. I would come home and they would be watching movies on the couch together. My mom would always cook him dinner and then I started finding out stuff. For example, I found out they went to the movies together and they didn't invite me. I only found out because my boyfriend used our joint bank account to pay for the tickets. Sometimes they would order food for themselves and not even offer me any and they would have beach days. They were spending way too much time together. At first I thought this was good because it meant they got along, but the more my mom dressed provocatively, the more I realized she was trying to seduce him. Then my boyfriend breaks up with me and tells me that I should move out because him and my mom fell in love. Part Part three of how my boyfriend broke up with me to marry my mother. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sent to me on Instagram. So one day my boyfriend breaks up with me and tells me that I should move out. And when I asked him why, he said that him and my mother fell in love. But since I was already suspecting something, it didn't really surprise me. But of course, I was still devastated. That's when he asked me if I could move out that same night. Mind you, I don't have any money or even a place to go to. That's when I run over to my mom's room and guess what? She had locked herself inside. The coward didn't even want to face her own daughter. She told me that the best thing for everyone was for me to move out and that she knew I could get back up on my feet. So I grabbed some of my stuff and I went over to my best friend's house. My best friend invited me to live with her, thank God. A few weeks later, my mom invites me to her wedding with my boyfriend. Or ex, I should say. Last I heard, she's doing OnlyFans and my ex is living off of her. I have a better job, I'm thriving and have my own apartment. Story time! My cheapest client. As a beginner nail tech, I let a lot of things slide. 
and I feel like I was just too nice and sometimes things can be my fault but anyways let's get into the story at this point I've been doing nails for at least like five months and I had this one new client book with me everything was going smooth until they showed up and they brought their own materials by materials, I mean like rhinestones, gel polish, acrylic powder, basically everything I needed to do her nails. And I never know how to say no because I'm a nice person and people scare me low-key. So I agreed and I'm like, okay, we can use these to do your nails. Everything was going fine and she had all types of different designs on each nail, which took a lot of time. And she was extremely picky on where she wanted her designs. And the set probably took me around four hours. And at the end, her nails came out just how she wanted. And she refused to pay me because it was her materials. So I took her nails off. Story time, one of my rudest clients. So you all know when I was taking clients, I was a home-based nail tech, meaning I was working from my house. And to be more specific, during this time, I was working on my porch. When I first started receiving clients, I was charging about $15 to $20 per set. And I also didn't have all the materials I have today because I couldn't afford it. When it came to nail products, I always had high-end products and products I know that wouldn't harm my client's nails. When it came to lotion or cuticle oil, I would usually make it at home or like buy it at the dollar store. Now this one client, I was doing her nails, everything was going great. But as soon as I pull out the lotion and the cuticle oil, my client was like, oh my God, is that from the dollar store? And I'm like, yes girl, it is. It smells good and it works fine. And then she started recording me trying to expose me saying that I'm cheap. And it made me feel some type of way, so I clipped her nails off and never received her. If a website ever asks you these questions, don't do what she did. Once there was a girl named Masha who heard that there's a new service that gives everyone free internet access. So she decided to use it, but this would lead to something horrifying for Masha and her family. After she connected to this internet service, a web page popped up asking her to register some information, but the questions were oddly personal. It asked, what's your usual mode of transportation? With a photo of a bus, a boat, a train, and a plane. Masha took her bike to school every day, so she clicked on the train instead. But the next day, the local news showed that there was a horrific train crash that killed everyone on board. Masha thought that this was a coincidence, but soon she'd realized that she made a deadly mistake. Later, she needed to use the internet again, so she logged back in. This time, it asked, what kind of home do you live in? Along with four different pictures of different types of homes. She clicked apartment, even though her and her family lived in a house. And the next day, the apartment building near her school burned down. The police suspected arson. Then she went back to the internet server one last time. But this time, it showed a photo of her mother, father, sister, and herself with the question, who is your favorite family member? Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. I'll go first. Two years ago, I was walking my dog at the park and a man approached me and asked to take a picture of her. And I said yes, because why not? It's a picture of a dog. So he starts taking a picture of my dog and then I realized that he was like holding up her collar and then it hit me. My address is on that collar. He's not taking a picture of my dog. He's taking a picture of my address. So I told him that I actually didn't feel comfortable with him having, having a picture of my dog and I asked him to delete it. So he deletes it and then like starts walking away really fast. And I was like, Excuse me, sir, no, could you also go into your deleted album and delete it from there? And he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, mm, you have an iPhone, everybody has a deleted album, could you please delete the picture? And he was like, sorry, I don't have a deleted album, and like keeps walking away. And keep in mind, this is like two in the afternoon in a park, like there's other people around. So now I'm like chasing after him and I'm telling him, sir, I know you have the album, I will show you where the album is, can you please go onto your phone so that we can delete the picture? Oh, part two. Part two, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, so I'm still chasing after him and people at the park are like starting to look at us now because I'm chasing after him and I'm telling him to stop walking. And so he stops and I tell him again to delete the photo from the deleted album and he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, yes you do, everybody does. It'll take 10 seconds. And he goes, fine. And he like goes on his phone, does something for a second. He goes, there, it's gone. And I was like, could I see the deleted album just to make sure it's gone? And he goes, 
no, you can't look at my phone. And I was like, I don't want to look at your phone. I just want to see the album just to make sure the picture is gone. That's it. And he goes, no, you're not going to look at my phone. And I was like, sir, I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to leave until you show him the album. So please just show me the album so we can be done with this. So he shows me the album. The picture was still there. So I made him delete it in front of my eyes. What if I hadn't noticed that he took a picture of my address? And what if I went home that, that day and, you know, that night when I took my dog out to pee, he was outside waiting for me. I mean... <laughs> Story time, someone tried to murder me on a school trip. So during my senior year, I started talking to this guy that we can call Tyler. And we all had to go on a school trip for a competition. During this, we had to stay in a hotel room and we were all assigned partners. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but I was actually assigned Tyler's ex-girlfriend. We can call her Penny. And when I found out she was his ex, I was like, you know what? Not a big deal. I'm probably just overthinking it, but she had a reputation for being psychotic. And I mean, psychotic, psychotic. Since we were all in close quarters, it didn't take her long to figure out that I was talking to her ex. And she went crazy on me. She basically threatened me by saying that if she ever saw me with him again, I wouldn't be coming home to my family. I still honestly didn't take her that seriously until the next day she saw us kissing and she left the hotel room to buy throwing knives for when I got back. So when I reached the hotel room that day, she was yelling at me, threatening me, and then she took out one of the knives. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Insta. Part two to me almost getting murdered on my school trip. So when Penny took out one of the knives, she literally threw it right at me. Somehow it only managed to land five inches from me and I was okay. So I took off running out of the hotel room. I immediately went to our director and literally because her parents fund most of the band stuff, he straight up couldn't care less. I told my mom who happened to work with the superintendent's wife, so she told her the whole story and gave my mom his phone number. Let's just say they were suspended and the teacher was fired. She swore up and down that her and Tyler were gonna get back together, but it's been three years later and she's still crazy and he still hates her and I'm still with him. So I guess the moral of the story is please take it seriously if someone threatens you, especially if it's a crazy ex. Love you guys. Follow my Insta and DM me if you have your own story that you wanna share. My boyfriend and I have been dating for over three years. His birthday was coming up and I wanted it to be special. I decided to pick out a day where I went to the mall and got things that I thought he'd like and put it all together as a big present. While I was there, I ran into a friend of his named Matt. I told Matt what I was planning and since he was his close friend, I asked him if he'd be willing to help me pick out some things. Matt of course agreed, so we hit up some shops to find things that we both thought my boyfriend would really like. My boyfriend and I had recently moved in together and I knew that he was working, but his job's hours are always changing so I didn't know when he'd get home. I didn't want him to catch me red-handed with all of the things before I hid them, so I asked him what he was doing and when he'd be home. That's when he told me that he was already off work and hanging out with Matt at the bars. This immediately stopped me in my tracks because there was no way he'd be hanging out with him since Matt was just a few feet away from me in the store. When I told Matt, he was confused too because he was never asked by my boyfriend to hang out at the bar. We have a very trusting relationship so normally I'd believe him, but in this case I knew that it was a lie. I wasn't sure what to do because he's never lied to me before or at least I've never caught him in a lie like this. That's when I decided to go home and wait for him. Part two of how my boyfriend lied to me about who he was with. When my boyfriend got home, he acted completely normal. I asked him how it was hanging out with Matt at the bar. He told me about his day and told me how him and Matt just grabbed a few drinks nonchalantly. This made me angry because I knew he was lying, but I wasn't sure how to bring up the truth. I also didn't know how to tell him that I was hanging out with Matt without bringing up that I was also shopping for his birthday present. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt and let it be. However, when we were laying in bed later that night, I couldn't take it anymore and confronted him. I told him I ran into Matt at the mall when he texted me, so I know it wasn't Matt who he was hanging out with. He quickly got frazzled and I could tell he was trying not to tell me something. However, this only made me more curious. Curious. Finally, he told me to wait a minute and he left the room. When he came back, I sat up and he came to my side of the bed. He took out a box from behind his back and got on one knee. My eyes widened. He confessed that he was out ring shopping for me because he knew I was the person he wanted to spend the rest of his life with. We had a weekend getaway planned for his birthday and he was going to propose to me on one of the days we were there. I was shocked. Of course, I said yes and tackled him in a big hug. We went on our trip together and it was amazing. Now it's a funny story that we tell everyone. When I was around 13, my friend Sally and I were having a sleepover. I met her in the beginning of my first year at a new school. She was older than the other kids in our grade and was considered one of the popular kids, which is what I think drew me to her at first. It was your typical Friday night. We carpooled to her family's apartment after school. Her family was pretty religious and wouldn't let us watch horror movies, so we ended up watching Hunger Games instead. After the movie, Sally and I were hanging out in a room, listening to music and giving each other makeovers. By the end of it, we were looking much older than what we really were. Sally wasn't the most positive influence. Despite being my bestie at the time, she was manipulative and got off on putting me down. She also had a habit of talking to men online 
online and lying about her age. She showed me some text between her and a guy that she was talking to, which mostly consisted of him trying to convince her to meet up with him and the usual online creep stuff. According to him, he was 19. However, looking at the picture that he sent, this man was clearly at least 40 and looked like he lived in his mother's basement. Suddenly, we got a call from him. Sally answered without hesitation and I heard him say, you're so pretty, why don't you come meet me? Sally said she couldn't because she was spending the night with her friend. This sparked his interest. That's when he proceeded to try and ask us both to meet him. Sally, lacking any common sense, said yes. Part 2 of why you shouldn't sneak out. She planned for us to sneak out and walk 15 blocks to meet this creep in a deserted McDonald's parking lot. I didn't want to go, but Sally adamantly pleaded saying that she didn't feel safe going by herself, so I agreed. We took our phones and I stuffed a kitchen knife in my bra in case something went wrong. The route we took was dark and deserted. When we got to the parking lot, we saw a beat up Toyota Corolla. From what I could tell, there was more than one person inside. The man from the picture got out and left the door open behind him as he approached us. I turned on my flash to see and I could tell he was on something. His eyes were so wide they looked like they were about to pop out of his head. I suddenly became conscious of how big he was. He was about 6'2 and around 280. 80 pounds. Sally and I were both significantly smaller than him. That's when he reached out and grabbed Sally by the arm. His friends got out of the car and he invited us back to the car for booze and drugs. I quickly took my knife out and when he saw it, he released her. I pulled Sally by the arm and ran faster than I ever had in my life. When we got to her home, we locked the doors, closed the blinds, and didn't sleep all night as we peeked out the window in case they followed us. To our dismay, the same Toyota was circling around her apartment building not once, not twice, but three times. After this, Sally and I stopped talking because she was mad at me for ruining her night. However, I think it was for the best. Story of the time I faked having a belly ring. So growing up, my parents were really strict and I was never allowed to have piercings. Not even my ears pierced. And in eighth grade, everyone was getting their belly button pierced. I still didn't even have my ears pierced, so obviously I was feeling a little bit left out. So I started doing a bunch of research online how to make a fake belly ring. And I came across a video of a girl who had a real belly ring, but she used eyelash glue and just glued it onto her belly button. So I tried it and it did work, but the eyelash glue wasn't very strong, so it kept falling off. And this is around the same time that I started practicing doing nails at home and stuff. So I had a lot of nail glue laying around the house. So I said to myself, hmm, this might work a little bit better than eyelash glue, wouldn't it? So for the next few months, I super glued the belly button ring to my belly button. I ended up having a very bad rash after a short amount of time. And I knew it was time to stop when a girl who actually had her belly button pierced came up to me and was like, um, that looks infected. <laughs> Story time about how my boyfriend gave me sleeping pills before his boys night out. I had been dating my boyfriend for a year and we always had a pretty trusting relationship. One weekend, he was going to have a boys night out with his friends and I was going to stay home. However, earlier in the day, we had gone into an argument about how he never checks his phone while he's out or replies to my text to check in. He said he shouldn't have to check in with me while he's out and I disagreed because I just want to make sure that he's okay. Fast forward to later that night when he's getting ready, I told him that even though we're fighting, I still expect him to keep in touch with me. He agrees this time without putting up a fight and asks me if I want to have a drink with him before he goes. He makes us some cocktails and we drink them together while we wait for his friends to come pick him up. When when his friends get there, he kisses me goodbye and leaves. Not even half an hour later, I'm knocked out cold. I remember waking up once just for a second to use the bathroom, but then knocking out again. In the morning when I woke up, he was asleep next to me and I was really confused as to why I slept so much when I wasn't even tired. When my boyfriend woke up, he mentioned how nice it was that I hadn't messaged him and how I must have slept through the night after those cocktails. This raised some red flags and I quickly questioned him about what was in the cocktails. At first, he called me crazy and told me that he didn't do anything to them. However, after about 20 minutes of accusing him, he finally confessed. Part 2. My boyfriend gave me sleeping pills before his boys not out. After I accused my boyfriend of messing with the cocktails, he admitted to putting a couple Benadryl in my drink. This, mixed with the alcohol, is what made me extremely sleepy and caused me to knock out for the whole night. I was furious when he said it. He clearly didn't see a problem with it and even made a joke about how he should do it more often when he doesn't want me pestering him. I freaked out at him and told him that what he did was not only wrong, but could also be a crime. I think this scared him a bit because he quickly started apologizing and promising to never do it again. Obviously, I'm not stupid and I wasn't going to stay with someone who would do that to me. 
I quickly called my family who came rushing over. I packed my things and my brothers kept my now ex in the other room and threatening him not to come around me. I got all my things together with my mom and my sister and left him that very day. He wouldn't stop blowing up my phone with apologies and sending sorry gifts to my work. I had to block his number and threaten him with a restraining order if he ever tried to talk to me again. I was horrified that someone would go to those lengths and I couldn't trust him after this. He even tried to get his family to text me to get back together with him, but when I told them why we broke up, they were shocked too. They apologized profusely on his behalf and told me to stay safe. This is a story of the time that I caught my neighbor's mom talking smack about me. So I don't know about you guys, but every single Wednesday in my middle school, we would have a bagel sale. And some people's parents would come in to help out. And my neighbor's mom was one of those parents. And I had a best friend at the time whose mom would also work at the bagel sales. But this best friend of mine, her mom never let us hang out with each other because she felt that I was a bad influence on her. When in reality, it was the complete opposite. She was the one that snuck the boys in her house, if you guys remember that story time, where they peed in a flower pot. So basically her mom wouldn't let us hang out. And sometimes my friend would go with her mom in the morning, basically as a ride to school, and to help out with the bagels too. And one day when she went in with her mom, my neighbor's mom also was there too. So my friend starts eavesdropping into their conversation, and my friend's mom brings me up and says how much of a bad kid I am and a bad influence. And my neighbor's mom was like, oh wow, that's my neighbor, like we always suspected something bad about her, our whole entire neighborhood knows this about her basically making stuff up about me so then i go home crying tell my mom part two of catching my neighbor's mom talking smack about me so my best friend tells me all these things that my neighbor was saying about me obviously and i got really upset so i went home and i just started to cry because for some reason i felt like when i was younger every one of my friends parents hated me and i never really knew why I was always the type of person to like let my friends do whatever they want and encourage them in doing whatever they want whether that's breaking the rules or following the rules. So I mean I guess that could be something but I'm just being a supportive friend like <laughs> sorry I got off topic. So when I told my mom she was like okay come with me I'm gonna knock on her door. And I was like heck no I do not feel like dealing with this. Mom you deal with it. So she calls her up in the phone puts her on speakerphone confronts her about the situation and this lady starts going on about how she loves me like i'm her own child saying that i was never a bad influence on her daughter and that she actually wanted me to hang out with her daughter more like that's not what she was saying at bagel sale Am I the asshole for throwing wine on my mom at my brother's wedding? My mom and I have always had a dot, 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 difficult relationship. <laughs> I'm her scapegoat and my brother is her golden child. He can really do no wrong in her eyes. I'm expected to do housework every time I visit while my bro sits around doing nothing. Mm. So I don't visit much and I just avoid her. Despite all this, bro and I are still very close and I'm good friends with my sister-in-law. My mom has treated sister-in-law like shit ever since she started dating my brother five years ago. My bro and sister-in-law got married in October. They seized the COVID opportunity to have something small, 20 guests total, and it was in their backyard. My mom showed up in a floor length white dress. Sister in law looked like she was going to cry when she saw my mom. So without thinking, I just grabbed a bottle of red wine. No! Uncorked it and dumped the whole thing down my mom's front. Mom flipped out but couldn't scream at me because there were so many people around. So she just left with my dad and came back wearing a green dress. Oh my God. Okay, so it worked. Extremely toxic best friend story time. So when I was in eighth grade, there was this boy. And this boy would go around telling almost every girl that he liked her. And I was one of those girls. And he would do stuff with all of us. And there were like 11 of us. So we all hated each other. Especially this one girl, and we're gonna call her Abby. And every time we saw each other, we would be super mean to each other. Well, a year passed, we stopped talking to this kid. And I bumped into her at homecoming and basically apologized. So after that, we became best friends. And everything was good until every time I told her about a guy, she would start talking to them. Like this one boy that I was Snapchatting and talking to, she accidentally sent nudes to him and said, oh, sorry, I meant to send them to my boyfriend. So then she called one of my other best friends and went over his house. So I walked back to her house and she literally locked me out. Like her mom had to come open the door for me to let me in. And she was like, oh, it's a good thing you came back when you did. Because I was going to drive you home now and tell your dad everything that you did. And she goes, I don't think you guys should be together because you're unexperienced. And she would always tell me how he flirts with her all the time. So after our friendship ended, she goes, I just felt like it was always a competition between me and you. I'm so good, I'm so good, I'm so good. 